Welcome to Focus on Seniors, a television show sponsored by Helping Seniors of Brevard County, Florida. The show is designed to make you aware of senior issues, needs, and resources available to help us age in place and with dignity. This show will help you as you develop your own aging and care plan. I'm Joe Steckler. Welcome to Focus on Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County a show designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is macular degeneration. With me in the studio is Dr. Hedel Vashnov from the Eye Institute. And Dr. Vashnov specializes in retinal diseases, particularly macular degeneration and di diabetics, diabetic eye disease, I'll get it right, diabetic eye diseases, that's good. But Listen closely today because my initial discussions with Dr. Vashnov tell me that you're going to find us a very interesting half hour. So it's important to pay attention. Welcome, Dr. Vashnov. Thank you, Joe, for having me. I'm glad, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, so far from the Eye Institute, we've had uh, Dr. Mandizi, who talked about uh, double vision, Dr. McManus, who talked about glaucoma, and I also got him to talk a little bit about cataracts. And now you're going to talk about macular degeneration. Um, but how about just telling just for just a few seconds, uh, maybe a minute, about your own background. Where did you get your training? Where are you from? Well, um, I originally uh, came from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and I did all my undergraduate training and education in Atlanta. Then um, I came to the University of Florida, did all my medical training at the University of Florida and uh, in Gainesville and stayed there for a short time on faculty and then have moved to Brevard County for about the last five years now. This is my fifth year okay. here in So Brevard you were on faculty at, at the University of Georgia? I mean, no. the University of Florida? Yeah, I still have an adjunct faculty title. So yes, I, I, I'm an uh, adjunct clinical faculty with the University of Florida still active. So you know what the swamp is? Yes, I do. Did you go to the swamp? No, I didn't have a chance to go this past weekend. I wish I was there. <laughs> Folks, the swamp is the uh, University of Florida's football stadium, for those of you that don't know, or the ones that went to Florida State and don't want to admit what the swamp is. I am I went to the Naval Academy, so I didn't go to either Florida State or Florida, so I just don't want, want people to know. But your specialty is macular degeneration, and... Uh, I think it's extremely important that we know about eye diseases and how this relates to retina and all this. Perhaps we could start the show with just sort of an overview, Dr. Vashtar. Sure. Well, retina, uh, we can start talking about the eye. The eye, if you can imagine the eye as a, as a camera, it captures images. And the front of the eye, the lens and the cornea, will have light entered through it, and all that light then focuses onto the retina. And the retina is analogous to a film of the camera. It's part of the brain. These are the retina is made up of all nerve cells, and the one of the main functions that the retina has is to turn light into electrical impulses. Then those electrical signals go through the optic nerve to the brain, and that's where vision is interpreted. And so, what the retina does is essentially convert what's out in the real world into images, so that your brain can perceive those images. Okay, Dr. Mandizi, when he talked about double vision, he got out to the point where how double vision, if a person experiences that, it goes through the optic nerve to the brain. It's, a, it's really a brain disease. But Dr. McManus, when he talked about glaucoma, it's strictly an eye disease. It's, the brain doesn't send the signals that causes that eye. It's strictly in the eye. That's correct. Where in this spectrum does macular degeneration but macular degeneration is an eye disease. Glaucoma affects the actual cable that connects the eye to the brain. That's the optic nerve. The cable itself actually carries information from the retina. So the optic nerve is actually a cable that connects the retina to the brain. So macular degeneration is in the retina. And so it is strictly related to the eye. But one of the things we're learning about eye disease, about retinal diseases, is that many, many symptoms or diseases of the body can manifest in the eye. And oftentimes, as a retina specialist, when I examine a patient, we're able to pick up disease, diseases and disorders that a patient does not know they have. For example, diabetic retinopathy, high blood pressure, 
So the retina is a very, very important part of the eye. Even though macular degeneration affects one portion of it, by doing a good complete retina exam, we're able to find systemic diseases that are manifesting themselves in the eye. A dentist, generally speaking, if a person had heart disease, if you're going to have a, a cavity or a, or a crown work done, they would have you take a, a handful of uh, amoxicillin, to, uh, which is a, uh, what was it? A antibiotic. An antibiotic. And to theoretically prevent some kind of a disease that would start from the mouth to travel through the mouth. It's a very quick passage from the mouth to the heart. Absolutely. So, I, you know, if people can think of that, I think of the optic nerve and the double vision and glaucoma. I come back to the same question. What is so significant about macular degeneration? I, we have people, I take a person to church, I know how that person is affected. I've, saw, I've seen people have special glasses where they had to, uh, like, a, like, a, uh, like a microscope that they had to use to, uh, to read the paper or, or, or the television and things right. like that. But in this whole spectrum of sight, where does macular degeneration fit in terms of disease, seriousness, ability to treat? Or, uh, we don't know that much about it. And, we're, and that's true. And we're learning more as we go, uh, as, we, as, as technology advances, we're learning more about the eye, especially about macular degeneration. It is one of the heavily researched topics in ophthalmology. And I read a statistic the other day that there are 900 places in the world doing research on macular degeneration alone. 800 of those are in the United States. So there are lots of very smart physicians and scientists working on macular degeneration and how to treat. But what's important to realize about macular degeneration is that, as I mentioned earlier, macular degeneration is, is affecting the retina, which is part of the brain. So it can have a pretty significant effects on someone's vision centrally to the point where a person can lose the ability to see in the center. The good news is they never lose all of their vision like they do in, say, glaucoma or diabetes, but it's a pretty significant disease. And in fact, in, in our country, people over the age of 50, it's the number one cause of blindness in people over the age of 55. So it's a pretty significant disease. And in addition, we have population that's aging. So it's going to become a bigger and bigger right, portion. You're saying that macular degeneration is the number one cause of blindness? Loss of central vision, yes. Inability to see clearly in the center and loss of vision, the number one cause over the age of 55. But does the macular degeneration cause a total loss? It does not. That's the silver lining in this disease is that you never lose your side vision, but you definitely lose your central vision. So your ability to read and the ability to focus on an object you're looking at is gone. Okay, so if a person has macular degeneration, you can't focus. Like if I'm, I'm looking at this page I have in front of me, I couldn't see this. How would I see that through this, through the aid of a, um, of this, like a telescope or microscope thing? Do I look at it from the side or what? Absolutely, and here, let's let's. I'm going to bring okay, this model. Know, I know you have a training yeah, aid here, and show the audience exactly what uh, we're talking about. So, how can we get this um, here? I'm going. I'll show you what it appears uh, when a person has normal vision. So, example is this bicycle. A person okay. looking at this bicycle that has normal vision, the bicycle appears to be perfectly as it should. Right? As the person develops macular degeneration, we go to the next one. When you have slight early changes in the retina of the macula then the bicycle from being all straight lines start to become wavy. So first change that a person may see is slight waviness in the bicycle. And then as the disease continues to progress, what you can see is that the waviness is not only present, but the waviness may actually increase and then there's a gray spot that starts to develop. That means that those cells are losing the ability to focus in the center and over time, the central vision is completely abolished and there's just a gray or a black spot left in the center. Although the peripheral vision is still intact, the quality of the vision is significantly diminished. And, and to understand that, um, we're going to show you the other side. And you know, the retina, as, I, as we talked about earlier, it's part of the brain. It's, imagine the retina as a sandwich of nerve cells. There are 10 layers of nerve cells all connected to each other 
and their job is to communicate information from your eye to your brain through those nerve cells. And the, the macular degeneration starts to affect the very center of the retina. And so it starts out from normal retina to early changes of what we call dry macular degeneration. And then it moves forward into some early wet and then advanced wet macular degeneration. So it's a, it's a disease process wait, wait, that no, takes don't, stages. Don't put that thing back out. Because one thing we were going to talk about was the difference between wet and dry macular degeneration. Are you saying here that, that this part here is the dry? That is correct. Now, and let's talk about that just a, just a little bit. In a normal healthy retina, as you can see, the most important cell that gets affected in macular degeneration is this very bottom layer of cells. Those cells have a name. They're called the retinal pigment epithelium cells. And the, you've heard of stem cells. Well, yes. these are kind of stem cells of the it's eye. It's the eye stem cell? They're kind of like the eye stem okay. cells. And the cells above them that they interact with very closely are called photoreceptor cells. Or in, a common name that people may have heard is rods and cones. The rods and cones of the eye. That's what these cells are. So in macular degeneration, the retinal pigment epithelium cells are being destroyed or degenerated. And as a result, we can see these yellow deposits in a person's eyes when we examine them. And they're an early sign that those cells of the retina are not healthy, that they're degenerating, or they may be on their way to degenerating. They'll actually be yellow? They would you look yellow, absolutely correct. They look yellowish. And where does the dry eye. part fit in? So that? the dry means that not... The, the difference between dry and wet macular degeneration is whether there's blood or fluid leaking inside the retina. Remember, the retina um, is part of, it's, it's a sandwich of nerve cells that should not have any fluid or blood in, in the layers. The layers should touch each other. Okay. So when, the retina, when macular degeneration starts to occur, when fluid or blood starts to enter the, in the layers of the retina, that's when people lose vision, and that by definition is wet macular degeneration. What causes the blood to start entering the... Uh Great question. One of the very important functions that these cells have, the RPE cells, is they form something called a tight junction. So there's a concept in medicine that many people may be familiar with. It's called the blood-brain barrier. Our brain, and as I said, the retina is part of the brain, is specifically designed not to bleed within the layers of the nerve cells. So these cells, they're abutting each other. They'll imagine them to be a fence. They have tight junctions that keep them together. Now, what macular degeneration does is when these cells, the RPE cells, when they degenerate, then the fence breaks down. And the normal blood vessels that are present underneath the retina, as well as some chemical changes that triggers growth of new blood vessels, these blood vessels start to sprout into the retina. They should not be present there. What, what keeps, the, does, does this healthy layer here keep that blood from... That's from absolutely correct. It's the healthy layer that protects the retina and keeps the blood vessels from coming in. Okay, so the blood flow through the blood vessels below that is normal. That's correct. And when that starts to break right. down, the so blood So when comes the through. fence breaks down, blood okay. vessels start to creep All in. All right, okay, all right. Then you get to the right. Then you get to the wet macular degeneration. Then you get to the wet. That's correct. Right. And 85% of macular degeneration is dry, 15% is wet, but the wet macular degeneration is often the most devastating and is often what we call the most acute situation. That means a person can have dry macular degeneration, notice that they may have some distortion, but they could wake up one morning and have bleeding in their eye and have lost their central vision. Okay. So it, it can happen that suddenly. I'm going to do something that could cause me a problem. I'm going to get off my script here for a minute, and I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a question. Because you, and the information you sent me, you talked about shots being effective in, in a certain part or a certain stage of this disease. When you inject a shot into the eye for macular degeneration, where do you put that shot in this stage here? And okay. what does it do? How does it, so what does it prevent? So the shots are a good way to treat wet macular degeneration. And we can talk about the shots and, and how they work specifically, the, the physiology behind them. But essentially, this model shows you the retina. Imagine the inside of the eye being here, the retina is the inner back wall of the eye, right. and the outside of the eye being down here. 
So the, when, we, when I inject a medicine, I inject the needle about here into the middle of the eye, into the middle of the space called the vitreous cavity. And the medicine will then stay within the vitreous cavity and make its way towards the retina and eventually start changing the course of the wet macular degeneration in the retina. We never inject within the retina because, as I mentioned to you, it is, it's a very delicate nerve cell structure and we don't want to damage it. The medicine then, in sort of a layman term, does the medicine, is the intent of the medicine to sort of seal the wall back up? No. The intention of the medicine is to make these blood vessels from growing into the retina. There's a, there's a very important thing that we're learning about macular degeneration, and that is what makes a retina go from dry to wet? And that's, the, that's a topic of research for many, many institutions, but one of the factors we feel that's causing the eye to go from dry macular degeneration to wet macular degeneration is the presence of one of many specific chemicals in the eye that causes blood vessels to grow. One, one specific chemical is called VEGF, V-E-G-F, vascular endothelial growth factor. And this VEGF med chemical that's normally present in our body and it's designed for our safety, it's designed to protect our blood vessels and our heart from injuries and things like that. Well, one of the side effects it has is it can cause growth of blood vessels. And when the retina is being damaged by macular degeneration, this medicine, VEGF, will create abnormal blood vessels and will cause the blood vessels to come into the retina. And so the medicine we inject in the eye is a blocker of that chemical VEGF. So the injection will actually dry up the abnormal blood vessels that are starting to form. So it, it actually works on the blood vessel, not blocking the blood vessels. That's from correct. It does through. not do any. The, once the fence breaks down, the fence will always, always remain stay broken, broken down. down. Right. This is why, if you if your friend needed injections, you will find that patients often need multiple injections. That one injection doesn't do the trick. When I take him to church on Sunday, I'm going to ask him if he had any shots or what he's done because I know that. Um, he, he walks on A1A, and he walks up to a restaurant to eat, and he goes to restaurants that, have, that are much lighter inside. Correct. But he presses that box to get it to light to change from red to green, and he knows when to go and everything. Absolutely. But he doesn't have anything on the, with him, but he can see well enough, I guess, then from the side. That's exactly that correct. Change. He's using his peripheral vision to be able to see. Wow. Very fascinating disease. Does macular degeneration, is it a genetic thing? Does it run in families? We're finding out that it is genetic. In fact, there have been, there are multiple centers that are working on genetic tests and genetic research, and we're finding out that there actually may be more than one gene that codes for macular degeneration. And there are no FDA-approved blood tests available today to test someone for macular degeneration, but there will be in the future. There are, there's no test for it? There's no blood test for it. No blood test. Oh, are there tests for macular degeneration? Absolutely. Well, the biggest, most important thing, if someone has history of macular degeneration or family history of macular degeneration, but not themselves, is to go get a good eye examination. Because we can catch, remember, early changes before they cause a person to lose their vision, as I showed you in this model. Well, you, if, if a person genetically is designed to inherit macular degeneration, you can see something in the eye that sends a signal to you as a doctor that tells you that there are ways to block macular degeneration? Absolutely. There are things that we can see when there are early changes that occur in the eye. And it occurs at different age for different people. And it depends on which genetic disease you have. And there's more evidence saying that some people have the aggressive form of macular degeneration where changes occur very quickly. And some people have a very slow growing disease where it, they don't lose vision for years. And so by doing an eye exam, we're able to screen people to see if they have any early changes, especially if they answer yes to the question that they have family members who have macular degeneration. There was a recent article um, that was uh, published that talked about relationship between family histories. If, and it was, it was interesting because it said that if a patient has one family member that has macular degeneration, their risk of developing macular degeneration compared to a normal person who has no family members is two times greater. And if someone has two or more family members with macular degeneration, their risk of developing macular degeneration is four times greater.
Well, let's say people watching this show, what would you tell them? Well, first of all, as you grow older, is there a risk factor that says I'm more likely to develop macular degeneration as I age, or is it something that's there? What uh, many people probably don't even have, never have had an eye exam. Right. Um, are you telling me that you recommend that everybody should have an eye exam, especially if their family should? So the American Academy of Ophthalmology has specific guidelines of when someone should have an eye exam. Their recommendation is that if you are a healthy individual with absolutely no eye problems and you're less than 40 years old, then you can go with examinations every few years, especially if you have no vision problems and no family history of any vision problems. If you have a vision problem or a family history of a vision problem and you're over 40 years old, then you should start getting an eye exam at least a baseline at 40 and then based on what the doctor finds, you can go on to have more examinations. Over the age of 55, though, patients should have more regular eye screenings than they would be, say, at 40, especially if they have a family history of vision problems. Okay, let's say if a person, when we're talking about if a person has trouble seeing and they go in and see an optometrist, okay. does the general run-of-the-mill optometrist look for anything that might indicate a need for that person to go to see a person like you? Absolutely. My experience being in this town is that we have very intelligent optometrist community. And, um, and the optometric colleagues um, that I often deal with are very, very astute. And they are very good at picking up early problems and are very good at referring the patients in a timely manner. The key with this disease, when you talked about glaucoma and you alluded about double vision, the key with this disease, as all other diseases, is early detection and trying to prevent vision loss. Remember, the retina is part of the brain, and we haven't learned how to fix the brain or nerve cells. So the key to preventing vision and preventing vision loss and saving vision is early detection and early intervention. If, if macular degeneration is detected in its earlier, earlier stages, and there's a pretty good chance that if, uh, if, our, if we uh, saw ophthalmologists and doctors that look for certain things like this. We saw, if we did that as regular, if we get our teeth cleaned or go to a doctor, if we think we're having some kind of a medical problem, um, we could probably do a lot to improve the overall sight of everyone in our country. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. I gave, I gave a recent lecture to actually uh, many of the optometrists in this town a few weeks ago. And one of the things um, I wanted, I focused on was the fact that we have to practice preventative eye care. The American Academy of Ophthalmology did a survey a few, few years ago. And what they found was that the highest risk population for eye diseases, um, patients that are over the age of 65, only 15% feel that they need an eye exam or actually go get an eye exam. So we really need to raise awareness amongst the high risk populations that eye diseases are important, and if we can prevent vision loss, that's much better than to actually have to treat these diseases. Uh, in well, on life. our new website, we will have a show on macular degeneration, a show on double vision, a slow on cataracts, and a show on glaucoma. So I think we're going to do something there to uh, improve the overall age of our, our educate the information of our, age, our older population, but. Still, there's more to it that needs to be done than that. Uh, I see articles and inserts in the newspaper about uh, eye problems and hearing loss. Um, most of it is uh, as an advertisement, and it doesn't it doesn't cover what you're talking about in this session today about some of the eye diseases to help people appreciate the significance of what they see or don't see. I, I, how about if a person has floaters and, and parts of her eye where you don't see things, my wife has a part in her eye where she can't see anything, and he, every six months they've been injecting something with a needle right into her eye. Does but, she have macular degeneration? No, uh -huh. um, but she still, it hasn't improved. She still has uh, a, a, a part of her eye she can't see. Well, injections are, that we had, we had talked about earlier, the injections, the medicines that we use injections are applicable to more than one diseases. In other words, 
There are injections that we give for diabetics regularly now in the eye, and we're actually able to save vision that we were not able to before. Um, I, I belong to a research organization called the, the DRCR Network, and they do diabetes research. And I know we're talking about macular degeneration, but the point is that we have learned a lot about the eyes, and like with macular degeneration and with diabetes, if we can intervene early enough, we can save someone's vision, which translates into a better quality of life for that person. And it's a better thing for us as a country, for the healthcare system, if we don't have to fix problems, rather we prevent problems. I, um, I've heard it said that uh, the goal of a hospital is to make it so that it's not necessary for people to come to them for treatment. <laughs> it's the same thing works for the eye. Well, it's absolutely true. Prevention is definitely worth it. And one of the things um, about macular degeneration to remember is that genetics is one part of the reason. There are other modifiable risk factors a person may have for macular degeneration. Like for what? example, smoking. Smoking has been shown consistently in studies to be the number one modifiable risk factor for macular degeneration. I give a lot of injections in the eye for, to patients with wet macular degeneration, and I am finding consistently people who are smokers tend to need more injections than people who are non-smokers. Diet is another very important factor. We didn't even talk about nutrition. And nutrition uh, is an important factor because nutrition, there are things about the retina, things about the eye that uh, that we can we can apply nutrition uh, knowledge to because there are parts of the eye that can receive nutrition from external sources that the eye does not make. For example, um, carrots. Carrots. So that's you. You you, you read, led me right into it. There's something called carotenoids. Carotenoids are special chemicals in our eye that are in the cells that prevent macular degeneration. They prevent the damage that is caused by macular degeneration. And you, once the eye, once the eye is damaged, you can't make any more carotenoids. You have to take them in, whether that's through vitamins, carrots, other nutritional sources like green leafy vegetables, fruits. Healthy living with healthy health nutrition, that's important because the chemicals within the plants and the carotenoids with the eye vitamins are all important because they're assimilated by the retina and they're used to protect the eye from further injury. It's hard to believe. If somebody wants to call you for more information, what number would they call you, doctor? Uh, they can reach us at 321-722-4443. That's the, the main line for the Eye Institute. Okay, and we'll have that number up again. But I want to thank you uh, today for watching this episode of Focus on Seniors. If you have questions or comments, please call radio station WMEL AM 1300 at 321-631-1300. For more information on senior care and senior resources, visit our website, helpingseniorsofbrevard.com. That website will be up in, well, it should be up by the time you're watching this show. But uh, thank you for watching. And I want to thank Dr. Vashnoff for being here today. I think we've all learned a lot. Thank you, thank, Dr. Vashnoff. Thanks for having me, Joe.